So now, Brady, if you put those on your camera, if you look through a white light source, you're going to see a really dramatic effect. Today we're talking about why I can't tell my rubbish bins apart when I go out the night before to put them to the curb. You may be like me, you have multiple bins that are due to put, be put out on different dates. You have to keep track of when the recycling goes out, when the normal rubbish goes out. And here in Nottingham, we have several bins we have to put out. In my case, one is green, one is black, one is brown. And often when you go out at night, you can't actually tell them apart. And that's because much of the illumination that we get now from street lights comes from a certain kind of lamp called a sodium lamp. That is changing, however. Certainly here in Nottingham, around the country, and probably in places around the world, there's a big drive towards replacing those sodium bulbs by LED, light-emitting light diodes, which give a very different kind of light. So today we're going to talk about why, under sodium lamps, we can't distinguish colors very well. This is a light source that is emitting light at only a single particular wavelength, 589 nanometers. And that corresponds to a very yellow-orange light, as you can see, because that's the wavelength of, of yellow in the optical spectrum. So there's a tube in here in which atoms of sodium are being excited. The electrons are jumping up to high energy levels. When they fall down, they emit a certain wavelength of light corresponding to the energy difference between those energy levels. Well, the question is, why do we see color at all? If we're outside in the daytime and our only source of illumination is the sun, then the sun we know emits light at all wavelengths, and together that makes a very whitish light. It doesn't emit light at exactly the same amount at each wavelength, but overall it covers the whole spectrum. However, when we have an artificial source of light, we're not always going to get that full spectrum wavelength coverage. And here's a really extreme case of that. So we don't have white light at all. We only have one specific wavelength, this very, very yellow light. And so when we have white light, it may hit objects. Uh, some of that light will be absorbed, some will be transmitted, and some will be reflected. It's only the light that's reflected back to us that gives an object a color. So in the case of white light, all of those wavelengths are provided and only some of them, you know, bounce back to us. If you don't have that full spectrum to begin with, if you're only bouncing light of a certain color off your object, you're not going to be able to distinguish what its true color is. So these are really fun. These are diffraction glasses. And so etched in very, very fine, fine much more fine than you could actually see are little grooves etched into the plastic. And what happens when the light passes through those is it's diffracted. So it spreads out, like a prism will spread out white light, and it lets you see the whole rainbow of color. So Brady, if you put the glasses over your camera and you look at a white light source, you should see a pretty spectacular effect with that white light being spread out across all wavelengths of the spectrum. So now you're seeing what is making up all that white light. But if you then look at our sodium lamp, you're not going to get that same effect. Of course, there isn't that wide wavelength range to begin with to spread out. You should only see another image of the same lamp because that's all you have to diffract. So for comparison, here's the white light. And then you can have a look at the sodium lamp and see the difference. OK, so let's go into the white light here. So here we have a fluorescent light emitting wavelengths um, from the blue to the red, which gives it a white appearance overall. What have you got here? And so we've got our... our, our oh, peanut as well. Yeah. <laughs> that was what was available in the vending machine. Right. Oh, so we've got the full rainbow here. Under the white light, you know, the, the, the white light's bouncing off. Uh, the blue light is bouncing off these ones. So we see them as blue. The yellow light's bouncing off these ones. Everything else is being absorbed. However, if we take them back to our sodium lamp, we're going to see something very different. All right, I'm following the bow. Let me mix these up now. Yeah, I mean, you can still tell which ones are light and which ones are dark, um, but you've lost the hue. You've lost the ability to distinguish what color it is, what wavelength it is. You can probably take a pretty good educated guess that that is yellow or orange because it's matching the color of that light. Um, but beyond there, I think you'd be hard-pressed to determine which one is blue or green or purple. So, we've got some crayons here, but I don't think, similarly, you would be able to tell apart which ones these are. Do you want to be, be camera, camera woman? Yeah, sure. You hold the camera. I'll put you out of work. This, this is your first time ever. Yeah, I'm behind the lens. 
I want you to take those crayons and write down what you think, what color you think each one is using that crayon. I mean, I think they're all brown, but, <laughs> but I won't write brown for all of them. I think that is brown. <laughs> I think they're all brown. That might be orange. That looks like a like purple. See, I think that looks yellow too. Red, maybe. Okay, okay there's the great experiment. You happy with that? I don't know. Let's find out. <laughs> Okay, okay, so there's my, there's my guesses. Alright, so we've got your colours down here. Let's take it back into the white light. How'd I do? <laughs> okay, so you got the yellow right, but then again, you did it again and thought it was orange. Uh, and then you got the green right, but I don't think you got anything else right. Red was purple, orange was purple, <laughs> brown was red. I'm, I'm, I'm pleased I got that one right. Yeah, well that's not surprising because it's yellow light. Oh. <laughs> so, Imagine a city where this is the only light source available at night, where these are what the street lights look like. In reality, around here, that's not quite the case because these sodium lights we have are high pressure sodium lights. So while they're intensely orange, they're not single wavelengths like this. There's a bit of mercury in the tube. It gives it a bit of coverage in the, in the blue and the violet. But there are cities around the world, San Jose in California is one of them, that uses or has used low pressure sodium lights completely to illuminate the city. The reason San Jose did this is there's actually an astronomical observatory, Lick Observatory on Mount Hamilton, not too far away. So in the interests of helping the astronomers maintain the purity of the night sky, they legislated that they would use low pressure sodium lights. Um, and so they produce a light that's easily blocked out by filters for the astronomers. It makes everyday life or every night life uh, very challenging because you can't distinguish colors. You can't tell the colors of cars apart. You pull up to a curb that's painted red for no parking. You can't see it. You get a ticket. From the observatory's point of view, if you've got a city that's nearby and growing and encroaching and, and having a lot of light pollution, if you can keep that light at a single wavelength, then it's better than nothing because you can have a filter in place that would remove only that amount of light. If the light is very broad spectrum and very white, uh, there's no filter that you can use to remove all that. So just with one filter, you can make the city almost invisible to the telescope. Well, things are changing now. They're changing on a household level. I've changed all my interior lights to LEDs because they're energy efficient. They cost a little more to put in, um, but they're gonna last for 10 or 15 years and they draw much, much less current. So the, the running costs are much lower. Uh, the same thing is happening on city and county-wide levels, so street lights are being replaced with LEDs. The advantages are there's potentially better ability to distinguish color, you get a, 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 you know, a more true representation of color. They are more energy efficient, so they cost less to run, they're more um, adaptable so you can dim them and you can have them on, on switches, they don't take so long to light up. Um, and if you get the casing right, you can direct them a little better as well. But it's not, it's not a cut and dry case. Uh, just because one bulb is more energy efficient doesn't mean your overall savings are going to be greater if you go and put lots more light bulbs out there. Some people don't like the glare, there's a lot more reflection. Uh, some of that reflection may actually go up into the night sky, so it's not at all clear that that's going to be better for light pollution. Uh, this is a transformation that, as we make this video, is still very much in progress. Uh, and it's going to take some adaptation on everyone's part to get used to it. Why don't you miss that yellow light too from your childhood? Like, do, <laughs> do you have a fondness for it or are you glad to see the back of it? Uh, I don't go out at night anymore so it doesn't matter. <laughs> actually, from the, from the space station you can actually see changes in cities as these transformations take place. You can see how city centres, you know, the very colour of them changes as LED lights are put in. Possibly really emitted as heat. And so by the time they fall back to their ground state, they don't have as much energy to get rid of. And so the energy they emit is lower energy than the energy they absorbed.